So our DIY electric turbo that's powered by a Hobbywing Max 4 ESC and a Castle 2028 motor had some serious voltage sag on the bench test. So let's build a battery that's not going to sag. This electric turbo thing has been pretty freaking dangerous. We've had all kinds of explosions and fires and meltdowns and everything else. And that's why I use LTO cells to test. The advantage of LTO cells is that they don't explode, they don't catch fire, you can saw them in half, you can drive a nail through them, and they're fine. And they also have insanely low internal resistance. These things average less than a quarter of a milliohm. That means they can punch out thousands of amps. So let's build a battery. The most time consuming part is, well, making the bus bars. I'm not gonna lie, it, that took quite some time. There was a lot of milling and cutting and drilling and cleaning up and everything else that just takes so much time. I even got to use a router bit to round the edges. So once I had the bus bars made and I found a suitable plastic box to put the battery in, you don't want this thing floating around out in the open, it was time to start assembling everything together. So between the cells themselves, I used some fairly heavy tape so that even if uh, the tape was to wear through, you still have the plastic sleeving to protect them from each other, basically. And I put the bus bars together. Now, <laughs> I did have this moment of clarity at one point in time, and that is if I drop the wrench, it's a 14 millimeter wrench, those are eight millimeter studs. If I drop this wrench, into this battery, bad things are gonna happen. And that was when I made the battery pack for the Sledgehammer Electric Turbo, which was also made out of the same cells. This time there weren't any incidents with the wrench, but there was one with a bus bar. Unfortunately, I didn't get it on video, but I dropped a bus bar against a nut and well, both vaporized bits almost instantly and little pieces of molten metal sprayed all over the place. But that gives you an idea of how dangerous and how powerful this battery is. But the battery pack is absolutely 100 percent unfazed so this is the balance board it's a 21s balance board it's already switched over to lto i put this little switch on here just solely because the two packs that are powering the sledgehammer that are in the car are always on and they will actually drain the batteries over a couple of weeks so i have to constantly charge them so I'm putting a switch on this one. So if this is supposed to be the ultimate 12S battery pack, why am I putting 20 cells into it? Well, simply put, because the LTO, the lithium titanate oxide cell chemistry, operates at a lower voltage. So you need more cells to get to the same voltage level. In fact, when they're fully charged, they rest at about 2.6 volts. Their nominal voltage is somewhere around 2.4, 2.5 volts, and fully discharged is two volts, although there's really very little energy left under 2.2 volts, honestly. Whereas standard lithium polymer batteries that most people are familiar with, after charging, they're at 4.2 volts. You know, nominally they're rated at 3.7 volts, and then somewhere in the low threes, they're considered discharged, depending on how far down the, the discharge curve you want to take it. But they do share a lot of similarities in terms of the shape of their discharge curve is fairly flat and linear. But LTOs do have a number of other advantages. They're very temperature stable, much more so than regular lithium polymer batteries. I already mentioned they're safer. They can also be charged very, very quickly if you've got the power to do it. And they last through at least 10 times as many charge discharge cycles as other forms of lithium cells. So something like this must have downsides. Well, sure they do. These are great for testing, but not so great in application. Although we have used these in the car at the track for the safety reasons and the power output reasons. They're big and they're heavy. They have a relatively low power density. Regular lithium polymer batteries have a power density that can be as much as four times higher. In other words, a battery pack can be four times lighter and a lot smaller that has the same power output capability as a regular lithium titanate oxide pack could. And also, unfortunately, they're expensive. In fact, I think I may have found a manufacturer of a more commonly available lithium technology battery pack that's also smaller and can still provide the power output that we need. And I'm very excited to do that testing. I've already got one of those sitting on my other workbench. Now, with any sort of pack like this, you can't just simply power it on typically because it has to feed a bank of capacitors and capacitors, well, basically look like a dead short until they're charged up to a certain degree. So you have to turn it on through a power resistor for a few seconds to get some charge in those capacitors, and then you can hit it with the full power. So I made this cool little circuit, which initially for a few seconds provides power through a power resistor. So the capacitors on the load side can charge up, and then it throws this massive electric vehicle contactor 
to give you full juice. And it takes about four seconds or so for that to happen. I'm putting that schematic up on my Patreon page as well as on uh, YouTube memberships here. So if you want that stuff, check it out. And that actually helps me pay for all this really expensive stuff, including the expensive stuff that I blow up. So thank you all for doing that very much. All right, so let's see what we've made. Let's measure this pack's internal resistance. Let's turn it on. Charging. On. All right. And this is at the connectors. Check that out. 5.7 milliohms. That's pretty awesome for this whole pack. This thing's going to be able to throw some power. Thank you all so much for watching, and please consider giving me a thumbs up. This thing works. It hasn't blown up yet. It might, but it hasn't yet. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming down the pike, electric turbo stuff, heavy battery load testing, you know, all kinds of just fun stuff. So stick around. I'll catch you all in the next one.